Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. These are going to be my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3 predictions. Yeah, overall, I feel like Season 2 finished on a much stronger note than Season 1, and there's just some really clear things that they can follow up on that are going to be a lot of fun. You know, mostly the Inhumans. For those of you that are wondering when it's coming back, Season 3 will premiere about the same time Season 2 premiered. That's at the end of September. International people, I'm not exactly sure when it's premiering again in the UK, probably the same time it premiered last year. Just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen season two yet. So here we go, top five predictions. Number five, Simmons will be back. I know a lot of you are wondering whether or not that was the Venom symbiote, like she was gonna come out with some sort of crazy symbiote. That's not the case. I don't think there's gonna be any Spider-Man crossover with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Any Spider-Man related stuff is gonna be kept to the movies. Although, you know, we might see some jokes about Spider-Man. Jokes and subtle references are usually okay to do, regardless of which character you're talking about. As long as you don't mention the actual name. That is how you conjure lawsuits. Wouldn't it be awesome if there was an Inhuman that did that, they just conjured lawsuits? That's how we're going to take down Hydra this year. We're just going to conjure a bunch of lawsuits and bring them down with crushing debt. As much as they don't get to do movie stuff on the TV show, the good thing is, is they, they kind of have free reign with a lot of the Kree mythology, and that Kree obelisk will probably be the back door to that. The actress that plays Simmons said that she feels like that thing just transported her somewhere. Like it took her to some sort of interdimensional prison. It makes sense that if you unleash that on a bunch of Inhumans, it sucked them up, it would probably all take them somewhere to be held. And I know you're all asking, does that mean that Simmons is an Inhuman? Probably. It only activates in the presence of Inhumans. They made that pretty clear earlier in the episode whenever Gordon busted in and it started going all liquid. After that, Mac rushed in and it stayed perfectly solid. So clearly Mac, not an Inhuman, even though he's capable of being co-opted by Kree technology. They turned him into that giant golem in the first half of the season. They do have to nail down the way they're going to treat the mythology just a little bit more. The way I think about what happened to Mac is, is the first half of the season, he was co-opted the same way Loki Scepter, like the, the Mind Gem, co-opted Hawkeye in the first Avengers movie. But just to be clear, the Mind Gem and Inhuman Kree technology, two completely different things. On to number four, the fish oil Terrigen Bomb will give rise to new Inhumans characters original to the show. The producers said that they went the fish oil route rather than full-on Terrigen Bomb, just to avoid some unnecessary complications. If they were to do an actual bomb, it would be a much more public thing, and they're, they're probably not going to do that until the Inhumans movies. So they don't want to step on a lot of the movie toes that they're not ready to do yet, but they do want new powered people popping up everywhere. In case I didn't make that clear, you're actually, you're Inhuman whether you have powers or not. Going through the mist doesn't make you an Inhuman, it just reveals your true self. It just, you know, unlocks your potential. Sometimes there's a little confusion about that, so I'll, I'll understand if you guys want to call the powered people inhumans and, and the other people just regular people. But Coulson is a really good example of someone who could survive Kree blood, but could not hold the obelisk, just, you know, just because his hands started to change. That was actually one of the big questions, you know, what would happen if Coulson were to go through the Terrigen Mist? Is he an inhuman? The answer we know now is no. I actually think that's a good thing because his character is already really weird, and he's supposed to be the person that reacts to all the crazy stuff. The big power people that we'll start the season with will be Lincoln and Skye. They'll be the basis for that new Caterpillar team. They don't have Gordon's teleporting ability anymore, so it'll take them longer to track down people, but they have those new Quinjets that Fitz is working on. The good thing about finding more powered people is, is that it forces them to raise the level of the villains up. So heroes get stronger, villains also get stronger. Meaning that the action will probably be that much crazier next year. So if you really like, you know, super powered action, we're going to get lots more of that. On to number three. Bigger Civil War movie crossover. One of the big complaints of the season is, is that the Age of Ultron crossover seemed like a very last minute thing, even though they knew about it going into season two, like before season two ever started, the producers knew what was going to be happening. One of the big reasons I think that they toned down that crossover is just because of the nature of what was going on in Age of Ultron. They, they weren't supposed to have S.H.I.E.L.D. It was all about Stark privatizing world peace. S.H.I.E.L.D. was still in shambles and they had all this stuff going on with Hydra. Next year, that won't be the case. S.H.I.E.L.D. is back. They're finding powered people. They'll be capable of helping out in a bigger way. So hopefully we will see a couple powered people in the movie and that will serve as the basis for a S.H.I.E.L.D. crossover. Like, hey, we have some powered people here. Coulson's been dealing with this. But as for the Avengers finding out that Coulson is still alive, that's still kind of up in the air. The Russos are making Civil War. Joss Whedon was the one that said that he didn't like that Coulson was still alive, even though he is the one that got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. off the ground in the first place. So just because Joss Whedon didn't like a certain plot point doesn't mean that the Russos won't use it. Whedon also kind of complained a little bit about Bucky coming back. The Russos brought Bucky back for Winter Soldiers. So you could argue that the Russos are really good at resurrecting dead characters. On to number two, Ward will be the big bad of the season. 
There was a big shift in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 where you had Hydra being the big bad for the first half of the season. Then the second half, it was all about this Inhumans conflict. They might do the same thing, you know, where it's this one arc, the first half of the season. The second half, it focuses on something else. But Ward is building a team. He will be the big bad for the first half of the season, at least. That was what killing Agent 33 was all about, you know, and him in the bar afterwards. He was kind of on the fence before. It seemed like he genuinely liked her. But in killing her, he also kind of killed some of the good that was still left inside of him. You could argue that he was faking it the whole time. It was kind of hard to tell from the actor's performance. I think he could have loved her, but in killing her, he definitely jumped off the deep end. And there is no going back with Sky. Like, that is, that is done. The funny thing is, is that at Comic-Con last year, the actors were still shipping Skyward. Clearly, that's not the direction the showrunners wanted to go. And I, I think that's totally fine. Season 2 was more about family relationships than anything else. You could also make the argument that Ward, you know, being classic Team Shield is kind of like a, this dysfunctional family. So them fighting each other is kind of like another family relationship. Really, really dysfunctional family relationship. That's usually where things get fun, you know, when heroes turn on themselves. That's kind of what's going on in Civil War. So you could argue that the show is moving fairly closely to the narrative of Civil War. Although in the context of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's, you know, a little bit more good and evil. And that's not really the case in Civil War in the movie. And finally, my number one prediction, ABC and Marvel will try to spin off another new show from season three. If you remember, there was the failed Bobby Hunter spinoff. They said there's still a chance that that could happen. I don't think they chose to pass on that because they picked up Agent Carter. Like they had Agent Carter, it was kind of up in the air as to whether or not it was coming back. And they had this other spinoff. I just feel like they looked at the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff and just felt like the premise wasn't strong enough or wasn't a direction that they wanted to double down on. Thanks to shows like The Flash finding great success with crazy comic book superpowers, I think that they're going more in that direction. They're going to double down on Inhumans. So any other spinoffs that they do will involve more powered people or more notable comic book characters. They are developing a new show based on a pre-existing character. They're, like, they're trying to reimagine a comic book character. They didn't say which one, but it's ABC and Marvel, so I feel like it's a female character. John Ridley pitched a Cloak and Dagger series, but ABC kind of passed on that. He came back with a really big interest in integrating Kamala Khan, which is the Miss Marvel right now in the comics. That doesn't mean that it'll go, but I do think that they're trying to move towards a Miss Marvel TV series eventually, just because they're going to do Captain Marvel in the movies. So it makes sense that they would try to take advantage of the character on TV, but it remains to be seen when that could air. One of the big issues with a Miss Marvel TV series is, is that she is like a Captain Marvel fangirl and she takes the name after she goes through the Terrigen Mist. You know, how does she become Miss Marvel if there's no Captain Marvel yet? The backdoor to that is Civil War. If they tease Carol Danvers in a certain way, they can move closer to Captain Marvel and then say like debut a Miss Marvel TV series in 2017. There's so many unanswered questions about that, but right now the best evidence points to a Miss Marvel TV series based on the Kamala Khan character. Here's my big question for you guys. You know, if ABC and Marvel are going to do a spin-off series based on a female character with powers, who would you want to see them do? Consider it would probably be a character that would stay on TV, like it wouldn't just go in all the movies all of a sudden. They've had a lot of success with the movie crossovers, but I, I think the TV shows try to do everything they can to stand on their own. Because we're like ramping up into Captain America Civil War now too, I'm going to start doing some more Civil War Ant-Man videos. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. If there's any bonus videos you guys really want me to do, just check my like Avengers playlist and see if there's anything I haven't already done. Feel free to make any requests. I think the real mission right now should be to get Punisher back on TV, like in the Netflix series some way. Maybe after Defenders. They already have a bunch of characters they're trying to work on right now, like Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. Punisher would fit perfectly in that very graphic, very bloody universe. And yes, by all accounts, Defenders will cross over with Avengers Infinity War. Other really big reminder, Flash finale tonight, there will be crazy time travel, so be sure to watch it. I'll post the video after the episode airs. But while you guys wait for that, you can click here for all my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. videos. I just did like a top five spinoff show video. And you can click here for all my Avengers videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.